a uh, few questions to go through. So first question was, um, and this wasn't actually in the group, but it's something I thought I would go over, right? And I think it would be good for uh, the um, the new traders because it's it's really a great example. Um, and I guess the, the example that I'm going to use is a really good example of buying the rumor and selling the facts. So um, on YouTube, I, I got a question or I guess a statement, I think it was, actually was a question because it was a question mark um, uh, uh, beyond it. So, uh, so buying when everyone sells and selling when everyone is buying is equal to buy the room and sell the fact. And, um, you know, for, for, the, for the guys that are in here, you understand about, you know, fundamental analysis, right? Um, but for those of you who are possibly new or are just catching up, um, it's really important that we apply fundamental analysis. I'm not saying it just because it's something, um, you know, it's just an extra thing for you to learn, right? It's something that is literally a must because the, you know, the, the, the big money, the, 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 the guys that are, and say the guys, but the, the, the masters of the universe, the people that are con trying to control the valuation exchange rate of the currencies, they um you know use fundamental analysis so for example um inflation um uh, uh economic uh, um uh, cycles to uh to really kind of control uh, i guess the valuation of the currency via um monetary policy like um raising or hiking or holding or cutting interest rates and uh, things like quantitative easing and quantitative tightening right but it's in, it's impossible to know how to buy the rumor sell the fact if you don't apply fundamentals because you can't look at a price chart without understanding what the rumor is right if there is a rumor at all right can anyone look at this price chart and decide what the rumor is yeah what where and when did when the rumor started it's impossible right it's absolutely impossible so you know, it, it, it's 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 like looking at, I guess, a, a painting and not understanding whether Picasso painted it or Peter down the road painted it. Right. You wouldn't know the value or the exchange rate or, you know, uh, of that painting. Right. You need to understand the fundamentals to know its value, whether it's cheap or a bargain um, or if it's expensive. Right. So. So understanding buying the rumor and selling the fact and ultimately fundamentals is all about buying ahead of time it's all about buying the rumor and so what are the rumors the rumors are are, are anything that is i guess going to determine the potential or change in value a potential change in value of any asset right with currencies it's you know uh, it is generally stems from um as we know interest rates whether they're you know monetary policy and that generally comes from the state of the economy as well as, you know, inflation targets, right? So we recently had, um, I guess, the rumor, right? So this, this article, I think it was today, right? There was an article that I put out in the CAD room, which was this. Oh, who's that? Who's that? That's excited like that. Um, Eagle. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um Right, so Canada, right? So earlier today, uh, there was a, or is it today I put it out? Uh, let's see, let's have a look, let's have a look. Right, yeah, so put out an article pretty much today, um, and it will. It came out yesterday, which was, the, I think it was the 31st of May, which was talking about the uh, Bank of Canada set to deliver another jumbo rate hike decision guide, right? So most retail traders, will look at this and then they will go to, well, how many of you used to do this? Yeah. Is go to decision, you know, on decision day, go to somewhere like Forex factory and then look to see if they high crates and if they high crates, if you, you know, had a limited knowledge of what high crates uh, rate, you know, rate hikes would do or cuts or holds would do to, a, to a, to a currency, or just generally looking at, you know, um, the impact, I guess, of um, of a news event. And then if they hiked rates, just literally pressed buy or sell. Yeah. So but, but 
you're too late in, 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 in many regards. Yeah. And that's not necessarily a blanket statement because it depends on where price is. But the point is, is that this is, this was known, this has been known for, a, for, for a while. Yeah. So, you know, at least, at least over the past, you know, couple months, as I've been saying, is it, and if you've been keeping up with, you know, my fundamental analysis, you know, on a weekly basis and all the videos that I put out when I talk about fundamental analysis, I've been a buyer of the Canadian dollar for a very long time, right? I haven't changed my bias, just to, just literally saying, for, to me anyway, I can't obviously give financial advice, but I've been saying in my videos, I'm a buyer and these are the reasons why, yeah? Because if we look at the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, if we look at the fundamentals, you know, and everything surrounding um, the economy, inflation, what the central bank is saying, they're looking to high rates, which is they're basically telling you they want to appreciate the currency. That's what rate hikes are. Rate hikes are basically them saying, oh, don't worry about, about being late, Leo. It's, it's fine. It's, um, it's being recorded, so it's fine. Um, you know, the, the central bank is saying that they want to appreciate the currency. They, you know, that's what their, their intention uh, is for the currency, right? For it to go appreciate and go higher or lower, depending on whoever's the quote currency, right? So the central bank are telling you, but getting back to buying the rumor, most, again, most traders, retail traders are going to look at today and go, you know, sit at their desks and go, well, we're going to wait for this rate hike and then I'm going to press buy and press sell. But the rumor started a while ago, right? The rumor started from a while ago. And we can go back through the Canadian, you know, uh, channel and we can go back, you know, for however long. But let's just start for maybe just about a month ago, right? A month ago, we were all talking about, um, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, Bank of Canada outpacing the Fed as inflation fears mount. Yeah. So outpacing so the Bank of Canada has hiked its policy rate by 50 basis points as an, and, and has announced the start of quantitative easing. A strong outlook for growth is heightening, right? So there's all positive data. This is from the 13th, and this was talking about Bank of Canada ready to tighten, um, uh, uh, tighten like the 1990s decision day. So this was the last time, this was back in April, and they were talking about, you know, uh, tightening, I think, for the first time. But also you'll see that again, and as we know, we should know this is that central banks, once they start hiking, it's known as a hiking cycle. So typically, you know, they, they're not necessarily a one and done thing. It's literally it's like, OK, we might hike once, twice, three times this year, four times this year. And especially if inflation keeps going higher and higher, which it basically has. Right. So here we are. So it says it says inflation is trending higher right so inflation has been you know that's their two percent target and inflation has been going higher ever since yeah so or well, canada is the black one right so the uh, us um is the uh, is the red right so inflation has been steadily trending higher which then means that successive and can sorry, say consecutive rate hikes are inevitable right so it wasn't it's not a mystery it's not something that we should say oh well this took us by surprise Buying the rumor, yeah, is all about reading what the, you know, the analysts are saying, you know, Goldman Sachs strategist says Canadian dollar is the preferred pick. This is back in March. Yeah. So you look at, you know, the data and you look back and you start to see, you know, Bloomberg article, Bank of Canada sees households in better shape to handle hikes. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's just positive, you know, Bank of Canada hike hikes interest rates by 25 basis points. This was back in, you know, in, in the beginning of March. So you've got Bank of Canada to kickstart rate hiking cycle decision guide. So again, it's it's all been here. This is from as early as February, right? So it should be no surprise that if anything, the rumor is, is that they're hiking. The rumor started months ago, yeah? And that they're going to be hiking. And if that rumor obviously does become the fact, then brilliant, right? You know, we're, we're, we're buying ahead of time. And that's what really buying the rumor is. So it makes things easier, right? It makes your, your, your decisions easier. If all, you were, if all you'd been doing since, you know, February, March, yeah, is basically buying the Canadian dollar on pullbacks, right? There are times where you're going to get deeper pullbacks. Cool, right? 
and not every single pullback is going to work. The whole point in trading is obviously understanding that not everything is going to work, and not every single level is going to, you know, going to going to react in the way that you want it to, because it's ultimately about, you know, millions of people's decisions on where, you know, the bargains are, right? But the point is, is that, for example, today, yeah, you're going to have lots of traders, yeah, let's say, for example, you want to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar, lots of traders looking to buy where? At, at a bargain area or, a, or, or, a, or an expensive area for the, for the Canadian dollar? Hi, Mr. Diligent, how you doing? Is that an expensive area or a cheap area? Is that the best place to want to buy the Canadian dollar? Savage says, no. Eagle says, expensive. Exactly. That's exactly it. So we're talking about buying the rumor. Right. A few weeks ago, this was a bargain, right? This was a bargain. Yeah. These were bargains. Remember the the the, the big money of buying, you know, over the space of, you know, they use iceberg orders and they have long, longer term time horizons. It's the reason why they do, you know, three months, six months, nine months, 12 month forecasts, right? Because they're forecasting where they think prices are going to go and they're just buying on, you know, the dips, right? The valuation of the of the currency. So the money, the rumor, right, about buying the Canadian dollar started, you know, way, you know, months ago, right? And then the rumor is still continuing, but the smart money are looking to buy on dips. Yeah, dips, dips, dips. This is buy the rumor. This is sell the fact. Yeah, this is expensive because, and we know this to be true. We know this to be an absolute, you know, fact because there was no more demand that pushed prices higher than that valuation. Yeah, for the for the CAD yen, so it's expensive. Now, is price going to be expensive here? Nobody knows. It could even go even higher, but the likelihood is that the the the, the rate hike has now been priced in. Correct. So would this be the best area to buy? As we know, it's not. Even if prices went, you know, come out and I think it's going to they're probably going to release. Is it today? I think they've got their, um, their release um, in about 15 minutes. Um, even if prices go higher. 10 a.m. Yeah, that means three. Yeah, three o'clock. So about in about 15 minutes, even if we see prices skyrocket from here. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you should have got involved in that because ultimately this could be a sold effect. And again, just to reiterate, these are terms that aren't set in stone. It's not like, you know, it's not like a, a, a mathematical equation where it's like one, you know, this must equal this. Of course, prices can do anything in, in the short term because short term is driven by liquidity. In the medium to long term, what you are looking for is just pullbacks to identified trade setups, whether that's a stop hunt, whether that's demand daily demand zones or whether that's you know intraday or uh, or, or cpr um uh, demand zones right the rumor right was down here yeah the rumor the rumor just buying on dips and the rumor's been going forever yeah so it's, it's really nothing to do with price and i understand it's it can be tough sometimes right especially when you see prices coming all the way down yeah, to these, you know, in that kind of price action and having conviction in your trade idea, right? Because ultimately, you know, you're seeing this happen in real time and you're thinking to yourself, well, why are prices going down? It's because as prices are going down and, and, and scaring, you know, the retail trader psychologically, what, what they're not looking at is the fact that, or they're not necessarily aware of, is the fact that this is a potential bargain. The lower it goes, because nothing is materially changed. Nothing materially changed for the Canadian dollar, right? It was always, it was still a buy, it was still a buy. You look back on the, on the, on the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the news cycle, nothing, they hadn't changed anything. Yeah, there might have been little small bumps in the road here and there, but the central bank was still on the hiking cycle. So it was just a case of looking to, you know, for entries and buying at certain levels. And for those of you who, you know, um, are interested, um, I did go over a uh, trade setup. I found it. It was actually on the, on the 23rd of uh, May. I did the weekly technical analysis. And if you go to around the 23, 
the 23 minute mark, you'll see, in fact, that I was highlighting the, uh, the CPR uh, trade setup and it was around that uh, 90, I think it was 98.50. I was talking about that, that area being a nice CPR and then guess what ended up happening? 98.50, so this was an hourly. It doesn't really matter the time frame, but this was the trade setup, right? That was the trade setup. Just didn't get rid of all these. Again, I'm not going to go over the trade setup, but this was what I was saying. Yeah, that was it. And in the video, I, you, you'll literally hear me say anything from the 1958, sorry, 98, 1950s, 98, 50 area. Yeah, is a good CPR. And look what you've seen from there yeah so buying the rumor yeah and selling the fact it's all about getting ahead of the curve getting ahead of what retail traders are doing because the money is always going to be made yeah buying the rumor can it can it be made on the day of course it can yeah but it's better the trends and everything's generally priced in by the time we get to um by the time we get to the fact so um and that's not to say as well that you shouldn't necessarily you know maybe you know continue to hold a small position or you know maybe add into a position but just let the technicals and where you are spatially yeah so just always be aware spatially of where you are now if for example prices came down to we're down here right let's say for example you know, this was this was today's date and prices were all the way down here. This is where you, you know, for me anyway, I would say, all right, then cool. I'm, I'm interested in buying that, right? Because they're hiking today. Doesn't mean that if they're going to hike and prices will go higher. As we know, we've seen what you can see is everybody look to buy as, again, everyone thinks that that is the thing that you do on, on the day of the news. You get lots of buying. You get liquidity hunts, right? Which takes out everybody. Yeah, it takes out all the stops, all the liquidity is below because everyone's pressing buy, takes them out. But because the institutions have a longer term view and they can, they're not trading like retail traders, you'll see, you know, days, weeks, and months later, prices then drift back up. They've just taken everybody out and then you'll see something like that. And it happens time and time and time and time again.